There it is. I got it. Oh, <laughs> turn this guy off. How's it going, everybody? Thanks for being here on kind of an odd time. This is a, you know, a typical Tuesday evening stream. <laughs> this is for all my, all right, Colin got his Dig Quad. Fantastic. This is for everybody on the other side of the globe. Hey, Dawson's going to join us. You want to see that screwdriver? Good, because I'm going to show it to you. That seems weird. All right. Good morning from the UK. Just got to bed, but may stay awake a bit longer. All right, Tony. Well, thanks for being here. Uh, I'm not going to be too long. How about that? We're going to be maybe an hour because I got a hot date with Mrs. Z's tonight. Don't know where we're going yet, but we're going on some kind of hot date. What? I think my camera's, is my camera too low? My, my, uh, you think my chair's too low? Well, maybe it's all right. I feel like I'm, I feel like I'm right on top of the microphone. But a little, can't stay, need your beauty sleep. Extra dose for you, Tiago. Extra dose of beauty sleep is what you need, buddy. <laughs> Have a good night. Thanks for saying hi. Oh, man. Just came to leave my like. Thank you, brother. Appreciate it. All right. From Madrid, Colombia. Oh, cool. Uh, it's just about Tuesday. Is it Tuesday? Wait, you mean just about Wednesday, Mark? Hey, Mark. How's it going? Sir Goodenough's here. The chair. There's the chair. Yeah, you think maybe it is the chair. Who'll be in charge of what? I don't know. Kevin's wondering who's in charge. I'm wondering who's in charge. How do we already have three dislikes? That's fantastic. <laughs> three dislikes. What could I have possibly done? I think it's just people who don't like that I do live streams and that somehow, um, you know, I don't know, that somehow it's it's whatever. I think that might be what it is because I do more four dislikes now. <laughs> Jeez. If you put a dislike on the video, please make a comment. We would love to find out why. All right. Ruman. Ruman keys. How's it going? You have a wow stick and you like it a lot. I, you know, I'm kind of excited about my wow stick. Should we, uh, should we jump right into it? Let's jump right into the wow stick. Jumping into the wow stick. Uh, I will, I, I, I kept it, uh, in the box until today. And then I thought I better make sure it doesn't need to charge. So I got it out just so I could hook it up to charge. Tough crowd tonight is right, huh? It is right. Wow stick is mini PC. No, it's a mini screwdriver, Will. It's a mini screwdriver. Let me find the right buttons to press here. Turn on my desk. There it is. The wow stick. It's actually made by Xiaomi and I, is wow stick anything like a broomstick? No. <laughs> but I did catch myself saying wow when I opened it up. I was like, wow. And I went, oh, well, maybe that's how they named it. I think dislikes can be accidentally pressed when people want to press chat instead. Oh, well, that's good of you, Yusuf. I, I, I appreciate the positive attitude. I appreciate the positive attitude. Uh. And I don't know that the dislikes even, I don't know what they do. And it's, it's, it's funny more than anything. Okay. But let's see, I'm going to find, I'm going to turn off my, the monitor over there behind this so we don't get confused. Oh, well, no, maybe I'll leave it on for a minute. Um, did I put in the, yes, called my sonic screwdriver from Dr. Who. It's very much. Oh, that's true. If you, if you accidentally click dis, click dislike, you can now click like and make the dislike go away. How about that? Driving home in cold Minnesota. Oh man. All right. Dale's here. Oh, this is fun. I'm just having fun. I'm just enjoying saying hi to everybody. Hi everybody. How you doing? <laughs> hi Jake. <laughs> okay. I think I put, at least I meant to put some uh, links in the description for uh, these things we're going to talk about tonight. Hate time zones. It's five minutes into Wednesday in the UK. Sorry, Andrew. I know it's a bad time for the UK. Um, my, my new bang good buddy wanted me to get something out. And, uh, so this was the best time to do it for me. Just get, get, get it out. And, uh, just a good reason. Just a good reason to stream at night. I hear the kids fighting. I really hate when the kids fight. <laughs> Hello, Boz. Hey, Boz, how you doing? Did you get a lot of questions answered? Did you, you were asking a whole bunch of stuff. It's not Rudy anymore, Reese. Yeah, it's not Rudy anymore. Mm, I think Rudy got a promotion. 
Rudy got a promotion and he, he or maybe got a better job. I don't know. But Rudy got a promotion. He bumped me to somebody else. And then that somebody else bumped me to somebody else. Oh, my poor Grace. She just, when Grace gets upset, she just yells and yells and yells. So right now she's just yelling. Like yelling is going to make them listen. It doesn't, does it? Oh, I was going to do the wow stick first. Let's do the wow stick first. So there should be some links in the description. You guys see the links in the video description down there? Say, hey, Charlie, how's it going, man? Okay, I think this is the kit. I don't remember which kit. Oh, this one's on sale. This one's on sale. Yeah. yeah. All right. So there should be a link in the description, but just so you get an idea, this is, um, I think this is about the one. I mean, this is definitely the kit, right? It's got the same things. This is the kit that I have. Um, I guess different sellers have them for different prices, and this one currently has it for $31. Okay, the links are there. Yay, Quindor's here. Yay. Hold on. I got to go talk to Grace. She's yelling her head off. Okay. Ah, uh, Grace is unhappy about the dislikes. I think it might have been Grace that put the dislikes there. <laughs> no, she she didn't want Dawson to sit next to her and watch YouTube. I guess. Something like that. Um, am I still running homelessness on a Proxmox? Yes, I am. Yes, I am. But I am actually about to... Um, I'm going to switch and do... Because I'm going to do Home Assistant in the RV. And I'm going to do it on a uh, Pi 4 with an SSD. Just because I need to try that out and and get used to doing that so thank you mark thank you for the cheer mark we're gonna do some of this i'm not off to a good start wow great empty chair yeah thanks <laughs> i'm not off to a great start about staying on track am i can you do an update how to update the chip for the dig quad colin you just take it off you put the usb thing you connect the usb and you upload the new you, you use ESP Home. It's just flashing it with ESP Home. There's probably, I'm sure he has a video already about how to put uh, W uh, LED on one of those. Oh, but you probably want, you want that uh, other firmware, right? How did the inventory sort out with Dig Uno and Dig Quads? It's all gone, man. Oh yeah, over the air is the easy way to do it, Colin. Over the air is the way to do it. Yeah, because it already has W LED on there. Sorry. Jeremy's asking me an off-topic question, so I'm going to uh. blame Jeremy for all the squirrels. Two WLED set up as separate instances on your Hyperion server. I can't seem to use them both at once. Do I need to set up a separate Hyperion server? Yes. You can only have one output. No, that's not true. You, can, you should be able to have two outputs. You can only have one input. So you have two outputs. Maybe it can't have more than one. Yeah, I, I think you're going to need to. I, I'm kind of surprised, but maybe it can only have one. Uh, E131 output. Is that what you're finding? I don't know for sure about that. I know that you can have multiple outputs, but maybe they can't be the same kind of output, or at least they can't both be E131 outputs. C um, maybe if you change, have you tried changing the ports? Have you tried changing the UDP ports on WLED? Maybe you need to have them on separate ports. Then maybe it would work. Those are good questions. I wish I had the answers to you for you. I don't. Uh, there is a WLED specific um, channel in Discord, not not like my Discord, but like uh, you know a whole different uh, WLED 
um, Discord server. So let me throw the link in here for everybody. So if you if you are interested in WLED, which I think pretty much everybody is, um, let's see. I need to edit the invite link. I'm gonna make it never expire, and I'm gonna make it unlimited. Okay. Copy. A guild for WLED. Okay, that should be the Discord for WLED. Now, okay, we better get we better get moving on this. I'm never gonna get done, and I gotta go on a date. Okay, wow stick. Here it is. This is the box for the wow stick. I gotta say, my first impression on like packaging and stuff was they did a really good job. It's very much like I don't wanna I hate saying like Apple esque, but it's certainly it's certainly nicely packaged. Okay, if everything fits in here really nice. These uh it, everything's in these little boxes. This thing is like a it's called a screw pad. And I thought this was super funny. You probably can't see this. Oh, maybe you can. Yeah, it says, I'm a screw pad. Yeah, somebody make a clip out of that. I'm a screw pad. <laughs> okay, and each box says that kind of thing on it, right? Like this one says, I'm a bits group with X1. I'm a bits group with X1. So this is a set of bits. This is the screwdriver. I'm a dual power screwdriver. <laughs> and then we've got... Uh, I'm a base accessories. I'm a base accessories. Oh, not access accessories says it on all of them. I'm a base. I'm a base. Here's more bits. More bits. Here's the case. I'm a case. And then it has these toolbox. This has this toolbox thing. All right. So let's go straight to the screwdriver. Actually, the screwdriver is already out of the little box. And let me tell you the first thing uh, about it. It's bigger than I thought it would be, but it is a good size. I was very happy with how fast it spins. Look how fast. Can you see that? It's got a bright light on it, and it spins pretty fast. I'm actually quite impressed. I have one of these. I have one of these, which is not a wow stick. <laughs> and I always think this spins pretty slow. Although I wonder if it spins, which one spins faster? Huh. Now looking at it, I'm not sure that they spin any different. Maybe this is because this one's got new batteries. Oh, maybe this one I put new batteries in it. Anyways, this is what we're comparing for the wow stick. <laughs> this runs on like a couple double A batteries or something. Okay. So I did think that it spun pretty fast. It is quiet, certainly small. Um, I will tell you the, the first, uh, disappointing thing. I hate to be disappointed right off the bat, but I assumed just looking at it that it was going to be like wirelessly charged, right? It's got this cool base and it kind of just sits in there. And I was sure I was. I felt sure it was going to be wirelessly chargeable, and it's not. This base doesn't do anything. This base is just a paperweight, basically. I mean, it's cool, and it does hold it pretty well, and I'm going to use it like that. Hopefully, it still works with a tip on it. I'm sure it will. Gosh, if it doesn't, that would be super lame. But to charge it, you can see right there, to charge it, you have a USB connector, just a micro USB connector. So not the end of the world, but boy, I was really looking forward to this thing down here being the charger. Too bad. The B&D kills the batteries. You have the same thing? Yeah. That looks like rubbish Dremel. <laughs> Put the bit on it. Uh, I wonder if it takes regular bits. I know it's got its own bits. Okay. So yeah, these, so these are the standard kinds of bits for like a big screwdriver like that or for, uh, you know, your, your, um, drills, your cordless drills and stuff. So they're too big for this. Um, I wonder if I do have one of these, which is the uh, the dumb the dumb version. And I wonder if these are the same size bits. Yeah, they are. Oh, are they? Yeah, they are. Yeah, they are. So if you have some of these other bits uh, and you didn't want to buy you know, a big pack of bits. Uh, with your wow stick, 
uh, you could do that. But let's put a bit in it. Grab something out of this first round of bits. So the bits come like this. They're pretty cool. It's got 1x and 2x and 3x. It says what they are, which is kind of nice. I don't know that I would know the names, but at least it gives you some idea of what's in each one, right? So you don't actually have to look at the bits. You can just say, oh yeah, that's a Phillips. I want a Phillips. So, And then to get these out, you pull them out down here, and then this whole thing comes and just kind of slides out. It's kind of neat. Um, let's see, what do I want? I want a Phillips. So I'm going to just take this Phillips here, which is a fairly big one. And put those back. I'm going to need a holder for this. Definitely going to need to print a 3D printer holder for this, for those bits. Okay, now let's see how fast it spins. Oh, no, that is faster. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's a, it's at least twice as fast. It's like the dentist. Zzzz. What's going on with the Permatrack orders? Uh, if you've put in an, a Permatrack order, you should have gotten something about shipping. I think they've all been shipped. We Right now, um, we're waiting for another shipment to come in. That's the best I can tell you. We, we have... Uh, I don't... We, what what we don't want to do with Permatrack anymore is take uh, take orders when we don't know how much we have. So the website that the web store that Mike uses, he was not able to put in. Um, he was not able to to allow back orders, and so he was just allowing orders and not knowing how many orders, uh, how many track there, how much track there was, and how much there was left after everyone put their orders in. Not a great way to do it, but that was the web store he was using, unfortunately. Anywho, um, so yeah, what's up with Permatrack? Um, as far as I know, the, well, there might be a few orders, and hopefully that wasn't you. I didn't see whose name that was. But uh, hopefully um, hopefully everybody who put in an order is going to get them or get them soon, but I don't know for sure, unfortunately. Mike is, de Mike is in charge of shipping them out. If you send me a message, I can check on it for you. Uh... <laughs> oh, interesting. Stop permanent lights for our construction process. Oh, interesting. Sorry, reading Discord. Okay, I got squirreled there on a question about Permatrack. I wish I had more information for you, but I can tell you that uh, we put in an order for... Um, we put in an order for 5,000 pieces of track and we put in the order over two weeks ago and they said it would take 20 days to build it, paint it, and then they would start shipping it to us. Um, so that's what I know. I don't know. I don't have any updates other than that's what they said would happen. What's the selling point of this screwdriver over getting an iFixit kit? I don't know what an iFixit kit is. What is an iFixit kit? Sounds to me like an iFixit kit is a comparable screwdriver, but I've never had one. I bet this ad won't. Oh, yes, I do. Oh. Is this, is this rechargeable? Is this powered? Is it powered, Reese? Popular toolkit for fixing phones, laptop, game consoles. Comprehensive kit for ultimate. Is it, it's not electric. Well, that's the biggest issue right there. What are you talking about? Wait, what's your point? What? Oh, you weren't asking a question. You were making a statement. I see. Wahoo, Jesse made it. Sweet. Can't see the camera. Oh, yeah. Sorry, camera. My paging system's still not turned on. This is the iFixit, uh, which is just, uh, it's just a micro screwdriver set, looks like. It's not powered at all. But they spent a lot of money on marketing because this is pretty fancy. Um, Got a, it looks like it's got some other parts too, some other things to it, plastic things, a little holder for portable kits. Yeah. Anyways, um, all right, moving on. I was wondering why someone would get an electric screwdriver. What? Reese, are you feeling okay? Why would somebody get an electric screwdriver? The better question is, why would you not get an electric screwdriver? 
Reese isn't old enough to have bad joints yet. And when you have to do this 10,000 times, you'll, you'll start to understand. <laughs> no, I think having an electric screwdriver is awesome. Why would I not? I wonder about, it says two power, it says dual power. I wonder what dual power means. I don't think there's a slow and a fast. I wonder if dual power just means forward and backward. Huh, let's see what else is in here. Okay, and then we'll take something apart. All right, here's a few other things. This is what's in the tool accessory bin. I don't know what this is for. This might be like, oh, you know what? These are repair tools. That's what this is for. So this is like, if you're gonna take a, oh, you can't see. Ugh, okay. So this is a repair tool, right? So if you wanted to uh, pop this on the screen of a phone or something and pull the screen off with this, that's what this guy's for. This here is also for getting under the edges and prying up corners of, of delicate uh, plastic or metal or glass edges, right? They give you a little USB cable for charging. Um, looks like they gave you some screws or a little jar to keep your own screws in. Give you some screws to start your screw collection. <laughs> that was kind of them. And then this, I actually think is pretty cool. This says, I don't know if you can read it, but it says, it says magnetize down here and demagnetize up there. So I'm guessing, I'm guessing that, uh, if you have like a screw or like, like I've got a pair of tweezers that has become magnetized. And when I'm trying to place little components on a circuit board, it really sucks that those, that those uh, tweezers are magnetized. So let's see if this will demagnetize. It. Okay, my tweezers are gone, so never mind. <laughs> uh, funny enough, the iFixit kit bits would fit that wow stick. Yeah, I bet they would. I bet they would. You put the bit into it. Oh, with that when replacing the iPhone X battery. Could have done with that. Oh, is that right, Nate? You replaced the iPhone X battery? See, I would never do that. You can magnetize the screwdriver tip. Okay, cool. Well, that's actually great, right? So let's try it. So let's see right now. Right now it's magnetized. Great. So then we just take this and we do we just put it here on the demagnetized thing, rub it around, rub it for luck. Still magnetized. Yay. Okay, let's try something else. What if this this is magnetized, demagnetized? I understand. Still magnetized. <laughs> I would say read the instructions, but there really weren't any instructions in there. I hate it when tool when tools grow legs. Yeah, me too. Cause especially when I only have one of those. <laughs> if I had multiples, it wouldn't be as big a deal. Those screw oh the screws are so small it's unreal on that, I bet. How do you demagnetize this thing then? Mmm. Demagnetization, demagnetization. <gasps> it worked. It's now demagnetized. Yay. Yay. But I think I generally want it magnetized, so we're going to remagnetize it. Yay, it's back. Awesome. Yay. <laughs> Swipe it repeatedly. Yeah, so this thing here, de demagnetize it. <laughs> Yep, now it's gone, and now it's back. Oh my gosh, that's awesome. Cool. Well, I know it works with this tool, and it will work with other tools, like my tweezers, if I ever find them again. <laughs> In the same direction. Oh, really? So you go like this, back, like you're sharpening it? Is that what you do? I certainly did that. I'm going to keep it magnetized. Okay, so that's that. Uh, let's take a peek at the other bits, and then there's a case in here, and then that's probably about it. We'll just take something apart with it, and that'll be the end of it. Hey, four tracks. Oh, in and out, is that how you do it? 
Well, it seems that uh, it's pretty dummy proof. You can kind of do it any way you want, and it works. All right, what do we got here? More bits. Oh, good. They got some of these safety bits. Those little safety hex bits things. That's good. Some funky ones I'm sure you'll never use. Okay. I'm hoping for some, like, just plain old Allen wrench style bits. Once in a while you run into one of those. Any chance you can see if Mike's shipped out my order? I have no way to check if Mike shipped out your order. Uh, back in May? You ordered 100 feet in May? Yeah, send me a message, Dynamite, with your information. I'm, I'm sure he, if he didn't send it, it's just because we don't have any, we don't have it. I can't imagine why there would be an order left over from May. So, I'm sorry. That's a real bummer. So send me a personal message and we'll, we'll, we'll track it down. What did you order? Seems like that would be easy to track down. I would think so too, but I see, I, I, I manage the Dig Uno store here at my house. Uh, Mike is RGB man. And he manages the shipping of the Permatrack out of his house. And so I don't have, uh, access to his system. Well, I do, but I don't like regularly check in. So yeah, I guess I could do that, but I'm not going to do it right now. I, I, I definitely feel for you. And there's no way that we should still have something from May that hasn't been shipped. So we're going to have to find out um, what's up with that. Okay. All right. So that's that. Uh, oh, there's two more things here we didn't unpack. We didn't finish unpacking. This is a case. Ooh, it's kind of a matte, like a flat finish, very smooth, and it magnet magnets open. So you could put like one screwdriver. Oh, I hate this. So I have another screwdriver that does this. You can't, like this one, this DF Robot one, I want to be able to put the screwdriver away with the bit on it. Like, help me, screwdriver manufacturers. Put Make it so we can put the screwdriver bit away in there, right? Um, so is that what's supposed to go in there? And then you put one set of bits in there and then you can, and you can take it with you. I don't think, you know what, that, I don't think that fits very well. Oh yeah, it does. So just turn the button onto the side. Don't put the button at the top. There you go. Okay. This is my old wow stick. <laughs> it's not a wow stick. It's just a ooh stick. Okay, let's take something apart. What should we take apart? Oh, we could connect. Uh, we could connect some wires to it. Did you know that'd be fun? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Teaches you to put your crap away. Yeah, maybe. Trey, what's ERP mean? Does that mean put your crap away? Do you have oval shape for the Nespresso coffee machine screws? Really? They have an oval shaped screw? I got to say, I don't see an oval shaped bit here. Sorry, amigo. That is pretty dastardly of them. <laughs> teaches you to put your crap away. Okay, let's take something apart. Let's take a Dig Uno. This is a Dig Uno, which uh, I believe I tested in this functioning. So somebody sent it back because what they didn't think it was working, and I tested it, and I, it was working. When you when they had a new, so I think I've done four of these in the last couple of days that were, um, you know, somebody fried their D1 Mini, and then uh, sent the board back. Anyways, all right, so unscrew. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, oh, that's nice. That's already all the way unscrewed. You know what happens? It slips out of my hand. You see that? <laughs> when I let go of it, you see how it turns? <laughs> it's because this is a really, like, smooth well it's not a smooth finish it's like a matte finish and it does it every time 
just keeps twisting out of my hand when it gets to the end. If I tighten it too tight and I let go, well, I guess if I let go right at the right time. Okay, well, somebody's going to get this one. I'm going to ship this out and it's going to have stripped screws, so thank you. I mean, sorry. <laughs> Why is Dr. Z's playing World of Warcraft when I saw a YouTube notification? Oh, <laughs> inventory management system, yeah. Well, I'll tell you with this, don't use uh, Equid, E E E W C I D or E C W I D is the one he uses. So yeah, maybe there should be a little bit of rubberization. I agree. Anyways, Equid is the one that Mike uses and uh, we're going to change it. It's not going to, he's not going to always be using it. Thank you, Steve. I like how you have the little swoosh there on your E, Steve, or does that mean it's Steve, 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 Steve. Thank you for subscribing, Steve. Here's a little celebration for you. <laughs> Maybe you should rubberize it. I think that's a good idea. I don't need a piece of grip tape on it. It feels like I definitely, I do, I agree. I actually agree. If I need a bespoke system, I don't know what a bespoke system is, Nate. Plus one for Shopify. Shopify is expensive. I'm happy with WooCommerce. WooCommerce has been really good to me. That's what that's what I use. So far, it it's letting me do pretty much everything I want. There are a few things I would like to do that I haven't been able to do. Like I would like to, it's not natural, but you have to hold it differently in the palm of your hand. Ooh, really? Like this? <laughs> like that? Oh, I guess so. You know what? I was joking, but I think you're right. I think you do have to hold it differently like this. Huh. I guess that would work. I'm just such a thumb. I'm a thumb guy. I do the thumbs. Like this is how I would do it. But then it just gets yanked out of your hand. Ah, like that it just gets yanked out of my hand means custom in smart lingo oh well then let's do a let's do a bespoke system nate let's do it underhand like this <laughs> like i love this we're having a stream about how to use a screwdriver this is how this is how chat teaches dr z's to use a screwdriver <laughs> That actually did work pretty good. You hold it like this, palm of the hand pointing up. I see that. I could see that. That that works. Bespoke also means money. Oh, I'm sure Nate was was volunteering his services for free, weren't you, Nate? Push the button with the indicator. Button has an indicator. Is there another button here. Oh, I don't see any other buttons. Button with the indicator. Wish it charged. I like it. I mean, it's definitely slick. It looks really slick. Um, I I think I would be a fan. I, I know they're trying to be Apple-like, it seems. This is Xiaomi that makes this, right? And they're trying to be very stylish. And they, they've done that. It's definitely stylish. But I think you want function a little bit more here. And I think the style may have hurt the function just a touch. Um, the button's cool. I like the button. It's easy to get back and forth and, and it's very handy where the button is located. It's just the, the finish on this screwdriver is probably a little bit, um, I wouldn't mind a little bit of a grip, you know, I have this one, I have this. And if this thing was electric like that, it would be, it would be better to me. I think probably this could be bigger, right? So if they had this kind of grippy stuff, and you know some shape like this on there, I would appreciate that. But it's cool. I like it. It's good. It's good. I'm glad I got one. Somebody said get a wow stick, and I got one. It's awesome. Sorry, bad English. Indicator, pointing finger. Oh, oh, this one. <laughs> on a one to ten scale, I think I would be mean if I gave it an eight. I think it probably deserves a nine as far as what it is and how well it works. I love the light. I love how quiet it is. I love how fast it spins. 
Um, I would knock off, I'll say I'll knock off a point because it's not charging on this base. I think that's my biggest complaint is it needs to charge on this base. And then it's a little bit slick and it slips out of your hands. So, but I'd still say eight. I think, and, and it's not expensive, you know, 30 bucks. I mean, that, that kit, look at that iFixit kit, right? That iFixit kit is $70. I mean, yeah, I guess this one gives you a little bit more things, but even this $35 iFixit kit, oops, you can't see it. So this $35 iFixit kit with 64 bits, which who cares? I mean, how many of these do you guys have that you use very many of, right? I've got three or four sets with all this many bits and I use like four of the same bits, right? So having a ton of bits is no big deal. This has an extension, great. Otherwise, it's just a screwdriver. So 35 bucks for this, I think, is you're way better off with this. Tons better off with this for 35 bucks. Oh, I didn't even take out my, my screw pad after, after my really good dad joke at the beginning about I'm a screw pad. I'm a screw pad. So they're there. I'm a screw pad. <laughs> I wonder if this is, do you think this is magnetic? Oh, that'd be sweet if it was. Oop. Oh, look at that. Okay, so first on one side, it has all the different bits. And then on the other side, it's got these, which hopefully are centimeter apart, probably, right? So you can measure with it, too. Oh, it is magnetic. No, they're not a centimeter apart. <laughs> That's too bad. Um, no, they are about eight centimeters apart. <laughs> well, that's okay, but it definitely is magnetic because this thing sticks to it too. So that's cool because if you don't want your screws rolling around like me, I don't want my screws rolling around, they stick. Cool. And it feels pretty, feels pretty strong. I bet if you, you like, you can't scratch that very well. So that's good. Um, all right, cool. I like this screw pad. Now I, now I need to, hopefully this is magnetized. Oh, good. Pick up the screws. Okay. All right. Fun times. Fun times. What do you think? Tattoo gun grips? Ooh. I don't know what that's like, Jim, but sounds like a good idea. Plasti dip might help with the DIY grip. I would be so afraid of ruining of ruining it. If I, but maybe. We'll see. Probably after years of doing it, just the grease from your fingers is going to make it a little more grippy. <laughs> At least I speak for myself with my greasy fingers. Um, okay, let's move on to thing number two, since we're only going to have a short stream tonight, and I have two things to, to stream about. The other thing to stream about is my new power supply. It is the Mini Leaf. And the one that I have here, we'll go up here so you can see. The one that I have is the uh NPS 3010 watt. Yeah, NPS 3010 watt this one right here. Wow, did I get that? Set? Man, that's a I didn't realize it was that fancy. I didn't realize it was that much money. I thought it was cheaper. Anywho's, you know some like I think some of these flash deals, like this happened yesterday too. I think part of their they do these flash deals when they have somebody stream about a specific product like this. So I know it's going to last a while, but I like to think this is all for me. They put this flash deal here for you guys. Oh, shrink fit tubing. I like that, Will. I like that a lot, actually. I, I could do that. I could see myself with putting a piece of sh uh, shrink tubing on here. Just like right here, you know, just so my fingertips and my thumb right there would, would, would have something to grab onto. Oh, you can't see it. I'm so bad with the camera. Yeah, just a piece of shrink tubing like right here. That would be sweet. That's what I would like. I would do that. All right, so let's look at this guy. So I finally got myself a real bona fide bench power supply. So the bench power supply, uh, what I've been using is just a computer power supply. In fact, I've gone through two different computer power supplies. Um, they, they worked fine. So far, the thing that I like best about this, besides that it's variable voltage, right? So that you can just turn it up you want to do three volts, you do three volts. If you want to do five, you do five. If you want to do 12, you do 12. This goes all the way up to 30. So I don't have any things that I would apply that to, but if I was testing something that was 
you know, like 24 volt uh, LED strip or something like that. It's nice to have that. Um, but to me, the thing that has been the most useful is actually the current readout. So when you connect something, and this is going to be a bit tricky because I have a very messy desk. Huh, well. Let's see what we can do about this. Okay. Let's see how we can display this thing on the on the stream. Huh. Uh, uh, we'll just tip the camera over on its side and Voila. <laughs> That's how about that for quality, huh? How about that for quality? Let's blow something up. Current limiting. Uh yeah. Ooh, can you set the current? Yes, you can. Yes, you can. That's why it, it has the uh coarse and fine. So the way it works, um, let me just make sure that these connectors are not connected to anything. So the way it works, uh you power on and then you dial in your voltage at the top there. And the voltage you can dial in, um, you know, with the course buttons, and then it really is pretty sensitive that way. So you want to get it like in the ballpark. Like if I was trying to go to like 3.3 .3 volts, I would stop there. I wouldn't try and get it to 3.3. .3. Oh, except this one's already all the way down. So I got to put this in the middle. And then now let's see if I can go up just a little. One. Oh, it can only go up one. Is that all it's doing? It's going up or down by, there's two. That's it. So it goes from 2.8 to three. So I guess you have to get it closer than I thought. Which is kind of tricky. I definitely, I, I, there it goes. Yeah, man. All right. So then if I have actually something that's running, let's see if we can power something up. Let me disconnect something here. Find the right screwdriver. Nope. Not in there. I'm gonna take like I'm gonna I want like the four the four uh, screwdriver tips that I usually use, and I just want them, you know, in the handle here or something simple. All right, let's just take this little guy here because I want to be able to just swap them out. All right. Oh, that's nice. If it ripped better. I love the light. Man, having that light on there is awesome. Okay, so I got here a little thingy. Anyone else tilting their heads for no real reason? <laughs> My neck hurts. Oh, let me see what I can do. Problem is I need it to point this way. And then I want it to be inverted. Let me see. Let me invert my stream camera here. Flip horizontal. Nope, not flip horizontal. Let's flip horizontal, flip it back. <laughs> uh, undo flip. About flip vertical. Try that instead. Flip vertical. Now, now the numbers are backwards. Oh, this is not good. <laughs> oh man. Okay. Anyways, enough of that goofing off. All right. Let's take uh, let's take one of these guys and power it up with the three point three volts here, and we'll see what kind of current it does. I think I should be able to just clamp on here. I tried that before, but I'm going to try it now. There's three volts, and then there's ground. It's probably not making a connection. That's not making a connection. All right, so let's try it with some jumpers. That's the other thing I need that this this kit didn't come with is um, I would like you know something that plugs in here that has like Dupont ends on it or something like that, you know, something like that would be, would be useful. Um, but I'm, I'm, there's probably kits for that or something else that goes with that. Flip both horizontal and vertical. Man, what would I do without you guys? 
Yay! Is it right now? I don't know if that's right yet or not. I'm <laughs> Ah, okay. Anyway. All right, this is going to be ground. And this is going to be 3 volts. And let's see how much current it will draw. Yay! So there you go. Current draw. Yay! So I love that it gives, it says half, it gives you watts down here and then amps up there. Love it. Don't you love that? Zero for two for pages. Sorry, it's not turned on. What can I do for you, Will? What do you need? <laughs> oh, hey, how's it going? Rob's here. Seems like something a DIY expert like yourself could make. You would think so. <laughs> how's it going, Rob? <laughs> Thanks for being here. I need to watch your, uh, your gas detection video. I haven't watched it yet. All right. Oh, you were saying flip horizontal. <laughs> uh, okay. So, um, what else can we do? We could also, we could power some LEDs. We could, we could power some LEDs. Let's do that. Let's power some LEDs. It might take a minute. We only have about 10 minutes. But let's do, let's do power some LEDs, because I think that would be fun. All right. So to power some LEDs, I know what we're going to do. I got a master plan. Okay. Here's what we're going to do. We are going to take this guy. First, we're going to disconnect this and not blow it up. So we're going to disconnect that. And then I'm going to connect this little dude right here. Okay. There's my wow stick. I already set it down. It wasn't in the holder. So up to 300 watts, is that what it is? Missed the beginning. Is that one of the supplies that comes in the kit or did it go out of the box? Uh, all that came in the box was, so I don't know, Rob, I'm sorry. I missed, I missed which thing. The beginning was just the wow stick. It was all about the wow stick. Now, now it's all sideways and backwards. So I'm, I can't see where I'm putting it. Anyways, wow stick was the first part. And then this was just the uh, second part here. Oh my gosh, I love that thing. Right, and let's put this in here. Oh, using wild stick. Yeah. Okay, wild stick again to the rescue. Okay. All right, so we got ground, ground, power, power, there, there. Okay, great. So. Now we should be able to plug in some LEDs and then we'll turn on the power. Oops, I'm going to disconnect this for a second. We'll turn on the power and we're going to, we're going to increase the voltage. This is set on 12 volts. That is a good way to destroy everything. So we're going to switch that to 5 volts and we're going to set this to 5 volts. Okay. Okay, there we go, 5.2 volts. All right, all right. Now we connect this. Oh, there's some LEDs. Uh, and we can see how much current it's drawing. And I bet you, if we turn this, I'm gonna turn it down and limit it. See what happens. Oh yeah, see they turned off. So yeah, you can definitely see what happens if you limit the current. Right. Or, you know, I can, if I turn it all the way up, it'll just let it draw whatever it wants to draw. But if I want it to limit how much current, uh, it w can draw, then I would use these other dials. And this one again, this, this fine one doesn't look like it gets too fine because it goes right to off. 
So there we go. Okay, so it's 0.8. So there's 1 point something, and then I can turn it down to... Oh, look at that. I don't know what that means. Oh, maybe it's... Is that because it's limiting it? I don't know what that means down there. But you can see the light's freaking out because they're not getting enough current. Doesn't you hear it? a fine adjustment yeah it says fine but it's not very fine that's what i would say it says fine but it's not very fine oh quindor had one that needed significant assembly i got you rob yeah no this one came assembled this one came assembled uh but it doesn't have all the perks that uh or all the fanciness that uh quindor's had i looked at quindor's too and um i didn't know what to do with all those buttons that was the first thing i said Oh, it's constant current and constant voltage. Oh, thank you, Mr. Dembleg, Dembelg. Okay. Yeah, the fine adjustment, not very fine. Um, so when would it go to constant current? Oh, I guess it goes to constant current if I decrease the current to the point that it is limiting it probably, right? So right now it's constant voltage, but if I turn it down, it's going to go to constant. Let's turn this thing up. I'm going to go down. Oof. It goes down so much. Okay. Oh. Now if I go down a little. There. Now it's constant current. Okay. Now it's on constant current down there. You see that little red light that says constant current. Um, and probably what's happening every time those lights dim is because the board is rebooting. So if you could put a serial monitor on this board right now, it would be like rebooting every time. It would be browning out. Because it's not enough current. <laughs> okay. Let's stop torturing the LEDs. Boo. All right. Yep, the red light means that the source is trying to draw more current than you are supplying, as I understand it. I think you are right on the ball there, David. That is it. That's cool. I didn't know it did that. So anyways, if you want to connect to PCBs, we use Hirschman clips. Those are more expensive, but I'd say they're definitely worth it. Ooh, let's check it out. Is that one of those super secret? W yes, it is, Rob. <laughs> so what, what that is, this little controller here that I was using, this is what I called Pixel Pro. I don't know. I don't know if that's a good name. I don't know if I'll keep that name. But anyways, uh, it, it's a prototype. Um, and I actually had PCBWay make a bunch for me. Uh, and then they've just been sitting here. So right now they're, they're kind of filling in the blanks um, for those who are brave enough to try them. <laughs> that's all I'll say. It's on the website. I put a little bit of information out there, but I, I don't want to, you know, yeah, that's an extra, that's what I have sitting around. <laughs> it, they're good. They're very different than, than the DigiUno um, without all the perks for sure of the DigiUno. So I made you buy one. Thumbs down. <laughs> Is that why you gave me a thumbs down? <laughs> Abuse it. Take it out and abuse it and uh, tell me what's wrong with it. Because like I said, this is a prototype and um, we want to make it better. So let's find Hirschman clips. Oh, those clips. Oh, you know what? I have some of those. I have some of those. You know where I got some of those from? I put that thing away a long time ago. But you remember I did that video about that? Um, I did the video about the um, thing I got from CES. The uh, the uh, little pocket. It was called pocket, right? I got one of those. Um, and it has little clips like that in it, which I like actually. Uh, I wonder if the fine adjustment would improve if you were to clean the pots. Oh, so inside here, maybe uh, you know what I noticed as I was playing with this too, let's turn it back on for a minute. What I was noticing is if, if I know that like I'm starting high, and I'm going to want to adjust down. I need to turn turn the fine dial all the way up. And then I can turn the coarse dial to where I want it. Or somewhere in the ballpark. And then once I get kind of close. I can then dial down with the fine. Even though in this case it made no flipping difference. <laughs> Uh, any who's it bench power supply good for some things um man that's expensive i wonder why that's so expensive i wonder 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 let's look at that for a minute i wonder why why would that be 
hundred dollars. Is it because it goes up to 300 Watts maybe? Because it goes to 10 amps. What did some of these others do? So there were several of these mini leaf ones, right? Maybe I shouldn't say that out loud. This, oh gosh. Yeah. Hey man. Hey Kyle, how's it going? Go blue. Gosh, are we going to beat Rutgers? Can you believe we're asking that question? Are we going to beat Rutgers? We're asking that question right now because Rutgers beat Michigan State and they beat us. So anyways, I'm still I, I, I'm still a Harbaugh fan. I, I still want him to stay. I think he needs, I think this will be a wake up. You know, I think one of the things that I've seen go, coming out of uh, our alma mater for the past few years is they're writing on history and they think, oh, because we've always been so good, we're just always going to be good. I mean, that was, to be honest, that was Rich Rodriguez's downfall. He thought he could just walk into Michigan and just because it's Michigan, he was going to start winning games. It doesn't work like that. It doesn't work like that anywhere. It didn't work like that. I mean, when Nick Saban went to Alabama, they, had, they were having some bad years for a while. Now they're just this ridiculous machine that nobody can stop, right? He didn't walk in there and go, oh, this is Alabama. We're just going to win. So anyways, that's my, that's my soapbox for a minute. So stick with Harbaugh. That's what I say. There's nobody better out there, I don't think, that we'll get right now. I couldn't believe I heard people say Luke Fickle. Yeah, he's done good things with Cincinnati, but he was also the head coach of Ohio State the last time we beat him. <laughs> All bench power supplies are expensive. Adjustable constant current and constant voltage drivers can give good, clean DC are expensive to produce. Oh, okay. Uh, there you go. There you go. That's why they're expensive. Um, <laughs> oh, this one isn't. Okay. So this one is less expensive. Actually, not that much less expensive, but it doesn't have the adjustables. It doesn't do the, con you know, my, this probably still does the constant current since you can adjust the current there, but it doesn't have the fine tuning of it. Right. So I guess, yeah, I mean, maybe that's not to me, it looked like it was expensive, but it's not that much. This is the kind of thing that, um, this is the one that Quindor had or something like this, right? So it's a small power supply and then you assemble it, which would be probably fun to do. Um, but I just wouldn't know what to do with all these buttons and stuff. So I went with, I went with one that was pretty simple. Yeah. See that. So it got to do a bit of assembly and such for that one. Probably not too much assembly though. Quindor. Just put your PEX wreath that I built from my tutorial. Oh no, not me. You didn't build a PEX wreath from my tutorial. You, you built a PEX wreath from Rob's tutorial. I know we're, we, we're easy to get mixed up. We're almost the same person. <laughs> um, uh, an old HP bench supply works well enough. But you know what? I, I tried one of these things, this guy right here, and it was okay. It was okay, but it wasn't fantastic. I mean, this is a poor man's thing. You just take a, a power supply like that and you plug it into this thing and then you, you know, can connect some stuff to it. So it's okay. It's not great. One thing I do wish that I, that about this guy is I would like to mount it somewhere that I don't have to like have this whole big thing on my desk, but I still want to see the screen and have access to the dials and this. So I'm not sure where I'm going to put it. I've kind of thought about putting it under my desk where I can reach it. Um, you know, cause I don't like, I like, cause I don't like things on my desk. Can you tell? Can you tell I'm not a fan of putting things on my desk? <laughs> Okay. Before I forget, I'm going to put my camera back to normal. Order the RD6018. What is that? Somebody asked if I'm an engineer. No, I'm not. I'm an engineer at heart. I'm an engineer at heart. It's funny. I was writing a, I had to write a, uh, <laughs> so I'm because of the Hobbit hole. Okay. You guys can those of you that know what the Hobbit hole is can ask, can answer all the people who say, what's the Hobbit hole? But because of the Hobbit hole, um, I'm applying for a contractor license in, in Idaho to be a contractor. Thank you, Patrick. So, uh, and, and in order to do that, I had to, I have to get uh, liability insurance for as, you know, contractor liability insurance. And, uh, so to do that, I had to apply for the ability, the, the insurance and tell the, the insurance, uh, uh, agent, my experience, right? So of course I went through this whole thing about, you know, what sort of construction type experience that I have and I was doing it chronologically. And then there was a big gap where I put, went to medical school, went to anesthesia residency. 
<laughs> and then back to back to construction stuff again. Oh man. Anyways. Uh, oh, so this is the one. Okay. So this is the one. Yeah. That's what that one's called. Okay, cool. Now inside there, it's not just a regular, well, I thought it was, Never mind. Uh, leave the ventilation on the side open. Gosh, both sides ventilation. What am I going to do? Well, I haven't solved that riddle. I haven't solved where I'm going to put this thing yet. So I'll have to work on that. People think you are a heart surgeon if you, if they don't know you. You can't see anything. There. But I'm, but I need to put this back up here so that I can uh, fix the camera. Transform, flip vertical, transform. Flip, horizontal. Okay, now it's back. Now we can take it off. There you go. <laughs> uh, I am an anesthesiologist, Kyle. So I just screwed my power supply to the wall of my garage. Does that really need a case? I don't think so. Not in your garage. I wouldn't. I, uh, you guys don't mind learning from my mistakes, right? I, I, it's, it's already, I've already done enough dumb things out there, uh, publicly that, um, I don't have anything to hide from you guys. I have no problem, um, telling you my mistakes. So I did all these fancy lights out in the castle. Right. And I, and I put, um, I actually put an Amazon echo out there and I put a Wi-Fi repeater out there and, uh, but the Wi-Fi repeater is actually running on POE. So that was working. So I didn't understand what was going on. I went out there because my lights weren't working on the castle and we had snow here and it snowed and the snow melted. And even though my power supply was in like an Ikea box, I guess it wasn't really sealed that well, or somehow some snow got in there and it ended up with, you know, like two inches of water inside of the plastic container that had my power supply in it. I think what probably happened was because to get the wires out, I just kind of let it, let it open a crack, you know, and I didn't, I didn't like clamp it. So I think that little crack just was enough that with the snow and the melt and after several days, there ended up being a bunch of, uh, a bunch of, uh, uh, snow got in there and it was fine when there was snow, but then yes, it was on a GFCI and that's, and that's, uh, yeah, thank goodness it was. Um, so we'll see. Uh, I, I, I reset the GFCI and it just tripped again. So I think maybe there was still some water inside the power supply. So I've, l I've let it dry out. I'm gonna let it dry out a couple more days. Why would you get into construction? Isn't administrating anesthesia really well paid? Yes, David, it is. And I'm not going to stop doing that. The reason I'm getting into construction bum, 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 is because I'm going to build this in Idaho. Oh, you're in Meridian? My dad's up that way. My dad's in, uh, in is he in Star or Eagle? I get confused. I think he initially was in Eagle and now he's in Star for what it's worth. No, this is by uh, Preston, Idaho. So we bought some land in Preston, Idaho, and I'm going to build a dome and bury it. Uh, I'm actually going to build one of, let me show you, green magic cones. These guys need to pay me instead of me pay them. Green magic cones. Bum, 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 bum. I'm going to build me one of these. Like that. But it's not going to have this big opening. It will have one opening, but it'll have an awning and it won't be white. It'll be wood color and it'll be whatever we want. But this is it. This is one they were building in Colorado. And, um, I'm actually going to take the course to build them. So I did end up, I did get a contractor because they wouldn't let me take the course by myself with, at my level of construction experience. Um, but they, I'm going to be in on the um, construction course so that when it's done, I will have my construction, my, my contractor license, and I will have gone through their little course. And so if I want to build more for myself or for somebody else, I would, I could do that pretty sweet, eh? It's not like we all have to make money to do that. <laughs> to do what? I missed part of it. Warm plus in a mostly closed box. Condensation. Oh, yeah. Oh, it could have been that too. Concrete construction. This actually, Trey, this is fiberglass. This is fiberglass and then you put uh, some insulation on top 
and well, it's fiberglass, then waterproofing, uh, then insulation, then more waterproofing. I mean, when I say waterproofing, it's the, the waterproofing that goes on here is with like sealants and stuff. And then you put a, a sort of construction wrap on it and then you put insulation and then more construction wrap on top of that. The same thing that you put on like the outside of your house and then you bury it in the dirt. Will it be a smart home? Yes, it will be a smart dome. Huh? It'll be whole assistant. Huh? <laughs> Dad jokes. <laughs> Anyways, so we're excited. Uh, in fact, my contractor and the dome guy had a conference call today uh, to talk about the plans. And uh, I should be hearing from them. In fact, I'm kind of surprised I didn't hear from them. So I should be hearing from them at some point in the next little bit not today then tomorrow and i'll find out a smart hole that's right that's right that's right uh there is going to be a concrete basement though so there is there is concrete underneath and this all started that whole hobbit hole thing kind of started because i was looking at these things you guys remember these Let's see, let's see, let's see. Why aren't they popping right up? This. In fact, specifically, it was, yeah, specifically it was this one that I wanted. Um, and I've still been corresponding with these guys, but I got worried about my ability to communicate with them about the construction and the waterproofing and stuff. But to be honest, as much trouble as it's been dealing with these guys to some extent, uh, this probably is not going to be any worse. You know, buying it from China with like no instructions is probably not going to be a whole lot worse than what I've had to go through to be able to get this thing uh, as far as we've gotten. I mean, we've made hardly any progress at all in like two months of just trying to get the plans together and stuff. So these guys, these guys probably could have shipped me the dome and I could have it half built by now, but that's okay. I'll still probably build one of these, uh, somewhere on the property at some point. Um, but they, they this is a, a company out of the U S at least they have a, they have an office in the U S and they're manufactured in Mexico. Um, so I felt like I had at least somebody to go to or some, some chain of command that I could, I could you know, uh, if I had a grievance, if I had a problem, I have a place to go, right? They have an office, they have a person I can call, speaks English. And so that's why I kind of decided to go with this first. It's a vacation. This is a vacation home tray, but if I needed to bug out, I would have a place to go. <laughs> Kids, Chinese hole, keep your own space. Yeah, I still may end up with one of these. I think what we'll probably do with one of these first off is be a garage you know, something like this and make it a garage. So you can pull a car in here and stuff like that. Hi, Richard. Your kids want to light up some their room. Um, what would I recommend? Actually, uh, what I would recommend, Quindor, do you have that link? Is Quindor still on? Quindor introduced me to these lights here. And it, these are little fairy lights. You know, you've seen these kinds of lights probably before. They have really thin wire that connects them and they're just really tiny lights. They're actually WS2812s, they're really low power and so they don't get super bright and they don't take a lot of current as we saw actually on this. That was 50 LEDs and it was taking what one one point something and the dang controller was already taking 0.5 at the beginning. So uh, these are these are really cool little WS2812 which are individually addressable little pixie lights and they're not very expensive. Um, Fairy lights. Probably the place to find them is going to be in my shopping cart. Quindor did a video about them, and that was where I found them. Oh, you can't see. <laughs> Anyways, I'll find them in a second. Um, in my orders. Concrete is the 3D printing of the construction world. I would love, 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 love to be able to build a concrete 
extruding house building 3D printer. I know it exists. There's a dude in like Wisconsin or Minnesota or someplace that built one. And then, then I think he, he turned his or into a company, you know, big company that was making them, making the machines in South America somewhere, Central America, South America somewhere. And they were using, they were making the machines to build, you know, to build like neighborhoods in developing countries, which is fantastic. But I would like it just to build like playhouses. Um, the last time I looked at it, which has been a few years, it was like a million and a half dollars for the machine or something like that. So, but I got 40 acres in Idaho. I can build whatever I want. <sighs> right? It's funny. I go to AliExpress in my orders and I search LEDs and it's a very long list. Let's see. Well, maybe this is them. Uh, yes, this is them. Here they are. Here they are. Okay. And then we'll get done. World's first high rise hobbit hole. That's funny. I own both the wow stick and the same power supply as the thumbnail. Nice, George. <laughs> Do I have product links for the stuff today? Uh, sir, good enough. I, they should be in the description of the video or on the description of this, of this, uh, stream. I believe so. Three stories underground. It would be great to be able to, to 3D print the basement walls kind of a thing, you know? I mean, it would take a lot of experimenting and I wouldn't necessarily want it to be my own house until we've, you know, I've got 40 acres. I can do whatever I want. Sounds like something a crazy person would say. <laughs> nice, Kyle. Nice. Hobbit hole on top of a dwarven cave. Epic. I would love to do a whole Lord of the Rings thing. Uh, I would love to have like a, a dwarf, a dwarven you know, thing in the mountain with their kind of angles and their kind of decoration and a little, I, I do want to have like a, a, a big, um, as well as some trees. I got to plant some trees. They're going to take a while to grow and all that. So I don't know how long I'm, I'm going to live, but, uh, you know, a little bit of an elven forest or something like that would be pretty cool. Anyways, I will drop a link here for this. Um, but do go see, uh, do go see, um, uh, Quindor's video about it as well. Okay. Cause Quindor did introduce me to these. So he deserves some of the credit for that for sure. And then did some, did I hear somebody say, Oh, the Zigbee. 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 I already have the ring. Oh, the Zigbee. Oh, I don't really see the advantage of a 3d printing for concrete. Doesn't seem like you need to con the control of a 3d printer. Have you seen them do it, Kyle? Have you seen them do the 3d printed houses? Um, it's pretty amazing. Because you can do the walls, uh, you can do the space in between the walls. So it does, it does pay off. You're not just doing like a, like a square, you know? So like this, like this one, you can see now this one, it, this one is a single axis, right? So this one, well, not single axis, I should say it, but it's, this one is, so there's one that's more traditional. I guess these are several of them. It looks like a bunch of them. Oh, interesting. Oh, and this one just places the bricks. That's probably really smart. Um, this one's mobile. Look at that. So these, this is advanced. Yeah, this was from February. So I haven't looked at, I haven't looked into this in years. I'm going to put this on my, I'm going to share it with you guys for one. Maybe for dome style houses, it would be really good for this kind of a thing, right? For this sort of a thing. Um, I want to save this to watch later. Save to watch later. Okay, cool. Precast concrete is like 3D printing or maybe Legos. Yeah, but it would be really cool to, for something like this. I mean, I, I don't know. Is this more practical than pouring concrete? I don't know. Uh, I don't know. You don't see any rebar. Nope. No, you don't. So I don't know. I mean, there's probably been a few of these that have been up for a while now. So maybe we can get some idea about their durability and, and stuff like that. But yeah, I don't know. I would certainly love to see it uh, and, you know, figure out if it's worth doing or whatever. Um, but that's pretty cool, I think. Anyways. 
that much concrete seems like it would be really expensive. Probably. I think uh, I th when I was reading about it long ago, they said that their plan was to use like local materials as much as they could. So they would take sort of the, you know, they would take the, the I don't know what's in concrete exactly, right? But it definitely has some some substances in it that really make it bind, right? Like when you pour a bag of concrete, you get this oily film on top. So it's got something else in there. It's not just water and water and dirt. <laughs> but I think the a lot of the mass from the concrete that they want to use for these kinds of things comes from the local area. So they would mix, you know, some some concrete stuff with um, there's a word for that too. I can't think of what the word is, but the, the, they would mix the substrate, I think is the, the word I'm looking for. They would, the substrate would be something local. So that might decrease the, the cost a bit, but I don't know. Concrete that will crack and concrete that has cracked. <laughs> uh, there was a guy who did a 3D printer out in the desert uh, with a Frenzel lens and made glass out of sand. Whoa, that sounds pretty cool. Well, I mean, I would love to play with this just for the novelty of it, you know? So it like, it, I, I don't know. We'll see. I got a long, I got a long list of projects. I don't need any more, right? I don't need any more projects. Okay. Questions. Let's do a few minutes of questions. I will go for 10 more minutes and that'll put us at 630, which is a half hour longer than I thought I was going to go. Um, I love this wiggly thing. So did you guys ever seen that, uh, the, the wall at Charlottesville? This was a Thomas Jefferson thing. Let's see, it's University of Virginia. And it's probably not, it's probably not really him. It's probably like Da Vinci or somebody like that. Walls, uh, single brick wall. Single brick wall. So if you take a, if you take a wall, if you, if you uh, make a wall, and wiggle it back and forth like that, you can put one, it can be one single brick wide and it won't fall down. Isn't that cool? So this is a wall at the University of Virginia. That's where I did my residency. So how cool is that? I think it's cool. So I think what they were doing with that concrete in that video was something like that, right? Now this looks expensive, but you know, whatever. It's cool. Anyways, you need to sleep. It's 2 a.m. Okay, let's do it. Last questions. No questions in the ask channel. Okay. Um, let's call up the kids. Let's see. I don't, I'm sure this won't work. So maybe I'll just sign off by myself tonight. You guys want the kids up? I think they should come up. Thinking the same. Looked up the house. Um, all right, let's try this. It's time for sign off. Uh, I will tell you, Dave, uh, uh, Kyle, when am I going to do another video about the EV bug? Um, the next step on the EV bug is the DIY. It's the DIY uh, BMS. So I have, and I sh said something about this on the stream the other day, but I have these DIY BMS boards. I have these DIY BMS boards. I have a couple of components I need to still hand solder on there, but each one of these goes on one of the cells uh, for the battery. And then I should be able to use my old leaf battery cells that I bought and not blow things up. So I think the next real, um, video that I will do about the bug will be about how I, how well that goes or doesn't go. <laughs> so this has been happening since one point or since uh, point one one seven. My things here are going unavailable a good part of the time. I don't know why. See, sometimes they show up and then other times they go unavailable and I don't know exactly why. It might be an ESP home thing. I don't know. Getting really into batteries and wanted to make an electric vehicle. Awesome, Kyle. Let's chat, dude. We still, we do have an EV channel, an EV uh, battery channel, ah, an EV um, car channel on Discord. And I want, let me take a second to say, for all of you who want to ask me questions, I know there aren't not that many people watching and probably not that many people are going to watch this, but let's spread the word. And I'm going to do a better job of doing this myself. When somebody emails me or they message me directly and they ask me a question, 
it's not really very effective for me to answer them back directly. I do it. Oh, you can smell the pizza, Will? <laughs> I smell the pizza, too. Yeah. It's on your lips. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> it's only pepperoni. Um, anyways, the um, what I was going to say is... Um, oh, so what I'm going to encourage people to do is to take their question to the forum, to the to Discord, and then get my attention with an at, right? At Dr. Z's and in the channel that corresponds to your question and ask the question. If I can, well, I will always read it. I, I will always read those questions. Um, if it hasn't been answered by somebody else, then I'll certainly do my best to answer the question. Um, but that way... It's there for everybody else to see. And I don't, I, it's just impossible. It is, it is gotten, and I'm still too nice to say no to most people that ask me a lot of questions with an email and stuff. But I've, I spend way too much time answering questions on email. It's just not a wise use of the time. I still want people's questions to get answered and I'm happy to answer them when I can. Um, but I think if they ask their questions in the, in discord, that will be much more effective at getting an answer, getting an answer sooner answering the same question for other people and giving me some time to potentially let some other people that have a better answer answer the question. All right, so there, I'm off my soapbox. All right, you guys ready to sign off? Yeah, Daddy, I milked Pinky, right? Oh, now it's back. Yeah, Aww. and you pulled this down. This Send them to Discord. Down. We're there to help. Sir Goodenough hey, is fantastic in there for helping, and there are others too, but boy. Yeah. Sir Goodenough, Will's in there all the time, I know. Blade's really good in there. At least that's empty. Yeah, it's pretty much empty. It's almost empty. It's not quite empty. Ah. Do you girls, what did I do with these lights? Do you remember these lights? What did I do? Yeah, with them? Uh, you you put them on the stairs railing. I put them down the stair railing, which is really cool. But I have noticed that I put my hand on this on the stair railing, and I if it's hot, it shouldn't be hot. I hope it's not hot. If it's hot, we need to we need to work on that. But I I grab them as I'm going down because you hardly see them, and so I forget they're there. So I put, grab my hand on there. And anyway, I just put my All right. hands between no, them. Mr. DIY is here. How you doing, buddy? Okay, how should we sign off tonight? Like we're sad. Sign off like we're sad. No, like All we're right. hungry because we want. Sign off sad. like we're hungry. Okay. As always, <laughs> thanks for watching. To make this time, adios. I want to talk about pizza. Okay. <laughs> Have a good weekend, everybody. We will see you on Sunday. And I want to put in a plug for the Home Assistant Conference, which is going to be December 13th. So I will not be streaming uh, because I will be watching the Home Assistant Conference, uh, which will be live streaming on uh, December 13th. Uh, there is a link at homeassistant.io. Go there and you can sign up. Um, they have a cool thing. You can pay a dollar to help them put it on, which I think is pretty cool. I don't think you have to, but you can. Um, where did I put the, where did I find it? I can't remember where I found it. I don't it. know, Daddy. It's in here somewhere. Home Assistant. There it is. Home Assistant Conference, right there. And you will get there. And then you there. can get a, you can it's sign up to put it, uh, to get it on your Google Calendar so you don't forget. Okay? All right, everybody, that's it. As always, thanks for watching. Look at that